call the function gl texture and if we want to create for example a tree for example uh, we would call it as a pointer variable so a tree and we will go for an array of one so zero and one so that's going to be an array with two values when we do that what we're going to do is that we're going to go from here back to eaglview.m and we are going to make sure that we could clear the necessary memory that we have recently allocated for this texture. So here in the allocate memory, super the allocate memory and, how, and all of the memory that's going to be deallocated and released once we used it. So in this case, we created a 2D, uh, a one dimensional array with two values. So a tree, one with a value of one, release, which will release the variable that we just allocated. Then we're going to go back to initialize with coder, where we are going to allocate the necessary memories for this newly created GL texture sprite that we want to display on the screen. So in this example, we're going to do the following. For integer frames equals zero, frames is less than one, frames plus plus. In this case, we're going to go a switch statement. And we're going to do the following frames with case one. Actually, we're going to go with case zero first and then one. So, case zero, we're going to go for tree parentheses and uh, frames. And frames, we're going to allocate the necessary memory that we're going to use to allocate this G, uh, GL sprite, GL, GL texture sprite. So GL texture allocate the memory initialize with image and with this image we're going to go for UI image image name and we're going to call with the name that we want to or that we have named our texture. In this case, tree that PNG. And then we are done there. So case one, I'm going to go for break, whoops, break and default break. I just like to do it like that for quick uh, initialization. So here we're going to say, we're going to comment initialized frames for default gesture, gesture spray, uh, for example. Just a quick example. So what we have done here is that we use a for loop function to look and the, the allocated array, the one dimensional array that we created for the tree, and we have called the function to see if there's any image called tree.png that allocated the necessary image into the, into the variable array of a one dimensional array. Now when we are done here allocating this memory space we could basically use it later. 
However, like we're just only allocating memory, and that's the only thing that we should do here. I recommend we will continue on down below to draw view layer. Now, before we go any further, we must retreat the image file that we re that we need and require to call this array or to be stored in the array that we recently created called GL texture. So let's go to the folder where we have our GL texture stored. So daily digest video we got trees plural and what we're gonna do is we're gonna simply drag this image into the resource folder so click drag drop it on top of resource folder and make sure that copy item into destination groups folder if needed is selected and click add and we have a newly copy here so we go back we make sure that the name is right which is not which is, is in singular and we want plural trees that PNG and that is correct for the moment then we go down below to draw view and draw view there's a comment called the that says replace the implementation of this method to do your own custom drawing which will we will do at this moment so we will delete these arrows here which draw to the screen the square that we saw uh, rotating around and we're going to I go not there to say it to chop off a great percent of the source code or the code that we see here from this point of GL touch uh, matrix mode to GL draw arrays so we will delete that and we will have only in this function the EAGL contest second contact contest and we will GL bind, uh, bind frame buffer OEX GL frame buffer OES view frame buffer and GL view port GL bind render buffer and so on so we will need only these and the only thing that we're going to do here is just to define a few functions well actually variables we're gonna do here and the variables that we're going to use in this case is just going to be for the frame for the rendering frame buffer so if def debug okay debug copper double some variable double start start time C T F C F T C F absolute time there you will get current time which will get the current time that we have at the moment and F and down below we're going to do the ending frame so how F def debug again double another double variable and time equals C F absolute time get current time again then we're gonna go total rendering time plus equal n time minus start time n f so we have the rendering time that we require total rendering time now we need to define this variable total rendering time as a global variable so I'm gonna go up 